So the actual, I've got my laptop here, so if I keep turning to the left, I'm looking down, I'm looking right. Hello, my name is Oluwatu Mionaike, but you can call me Tor, and welcome, or welcome back, to my channel. Um, so like I've said in previous videos, or well, the past two I think, uh, I'm diving in with the content. Like, I am back big time. Um, so today is a, a, a video about the Newcastle University MSc Computer Science Conversion Course and it, I'm going to detail semester one and all the projects that we've done. This isn't to give you kind of a, a code breakdown or anything, so there won't be any code shown in this video. It'll be more just to kind of walk you through the kind of projects so you know what to expect. You kind of have an idea of how the projects ramp up through semester one. And if you're not uh, taking the course, it can kind of give you an idea of projects that you might want to develop yourself. So, as always, I have my trusty notes right here on my phone. So let's dive in. So the first two modules on this course are number one, the introduction to software development, which is the first sort of heavy Java based focus course module and two database systems, which pretty much is as it is titled, but it talks about databases and it's the first sort of technical, heavy technical module on the course. So if I start with introduction to software development, um, that is exactly what it is. So the MSc conversion course is for people that have never coded before um, and they didn't study something coding based in their undergraduate degree. So I know one of my friends on the course, I think he studied chemical engineering, but has um, worked as a front end developer before and is from India. So now he's here and wants to work in the UK and thought this course would be perfect to do so. I also have met people on my group project that studied English literature and I studied architecture. There's a whole diverse range of people that come to do this course. So this, uh, this module, Intro Introduction to Software Development, is supposed to be ground zero. So compared to later uh, pieces of coursework, this is actually a lighter piece of coursework. The idea is to create a piece of software with a command line interface that you can actually um, also import information from a CSV file and the development will take that CSV file and pass that information and store it. So the idea isn't that the what we create stores the information permanently, it doesn't store it as a document and then we access it later, it just stores it in an array or an array list while the user is using the program. But the idea is that it's a track and trace program. So you have your establishments, which is obviously your restaurants or your bars, wherever someone can get can be seated, seated and can get COVID. So remember this is back when um, this is back when we were sort of still allowed out. So this is when this piece of coursework was kind of at its most useful because people were still going to restaurants and if you did end up having then you had to report back to the establishment when you had it, when you were there, that kind of information. So that's what establishment means. You have the user which is obviously the person that had the infection that should not be named. You had your you had your date, and I'm pretty sure that that was what those three things created something called an event. So we had so in your CSV file we had a sort of CSV made a generic one that everyone would use that had a certain format um, that would include user establishment and date. So the system needs to be able to take that CSV, pass that information, and then save an event into an event array list but you also need an establishment array list and i believe that's it yeah you need it so you need to be able to look at all the establishments that have had events happen in them so if there's an event an establishment needs to be saved to that establishment array list and if there's an event you also need to save that to an event array list so you can find out all the different events that have been so this uh then we also needed a command line interface. So there needs to be a menu. So the user could, for example, print out all the events that happened. Um, there also needs to be in the menu, you could also get to filters. So you wanted to be able to go through the array list and find, for example, a, an event that happened on a particular date, an event where it was a particular, particular user or an event at a particular establishment. And if there were multiple events with the same user, they should stay at home. <laughs> That was meant to be a joke. 
Uh, if there are multiple events with the same establishment, that you, you'd want all of those returned. And the last part that I want to explain is, yes, the command line interface. So you had the menu, uh, the first thing when you popped into using your system, you wanted the menu to pop up and then you wanted to be able to pick your choice. And then if you wanted to also be able to add events and add establishments to the array list. So that was an interesting piece of coursework. I would say the bits that I really struggled with was getting the information, um, was accessing the information. I wasn't sure if I should make my array list as ob fields within my object, if they needed to be in my event and establishment objects, or if they needed to be in the input output or the controller class. It was it was just quite confusing because I was new to coding in general. But looking back, it was actually quite simple. So as I've been talking, I would have shown like a little demo of what I did in the end on the screen. So that is the first piece of coursework. Um, I think the most complicated piece, probably from a sort of marker or a lecturer's point of view, was probably inputting that CSV file and then passing that information and putting that into the array list so it's accessible. And then maybe after that, probably the most second most difficult piece of development would be when the user types in the date, how do you get that formatted in the right way? Because we were asked for the date in a very specific format and users don't always put information in how you'd want them to or how you would expect them to. So that, and then we also had to show that we were testing the testing this information throughout the project. We had to show it in our controller class. So um, yeah, my feedback on that coursework was I, I struggled. I think I struggled most with passing information from one method to another. So in my controller class, rather than having lots of different methods, to control different parts of the program, which is the most recommended most recommended way to do this. I had one massive method that had my menu in and was just like, there you go, it works. <laughs> I, as soon as I got it to work, I was like, I'm done. I'm really sorry. That's all you're going to get. And because I spent about, I spent, and this is me being really honest. I honestly spent about five days doing this coursework. And I mean five days, wake up, sit there, wake up at maybe like eight, work in my room till about midnight and go to bed. It honestly probably took me about, what was that? Two hours later. 16 times five can't be 86. No. No. Is 80. What did I do? 16 times five is 80 because I'm an idiot. <laughs> Because 30, not 36. That's still a lot of time. It's, so I wouldn't consider myself a genius, but I would, I definitely also wouldn't consider myself stupid. So I would just say, prepare. That's what I want to say. <laughs>the module experience and the third, third piece, what? And the second piece of coursework was due at the end of the third week of the three weeks sort of module experience. We, had, we learned some basic SQL statements, which, which basically is CRUD, which is C is create, I think R is read, uh, U is update and D is delete. So we basically learned how to do that in SQL tables uh, with some really thorough examples, I'll admit. I, again, like I said, Newcastle University is comprehensive. 
I, I don't care. I will simp for Newcastle University all day, every day. Uh, and they don't even pay me. They don't even pay me. I pay them and I still simp for them. That's terrible. <laughs> That's real. I should have some self esteem. Um, anyway, back to the point. So, yeah, we learned some simple SQL statements and we learned uh, ER diagrams, which is what the first piece of coursework was about. So, they gave us a, they called it a problem statement in the, the coursework on the screen, but it, it's a case study and we had to create an ER diagram. It was, it's like a half a page of written case study where they talk about, in this case, it was an event management program and they just explained, for example, you could have a cyclist and a cyclist would ride for a team, but a cyclist can't compete on their own. And through that, you could tell, okay, what the entities should look like. Are there any weak entities, that kind of stuff. And set up your ER diagram. And um, you also had to write your assumptions because they were, and they quite clearly, clearly said, in real life, if you had questions, you would go and you would ask the business. And that would let you know, okay, is this a weak entity? Is this a strong entity? But in this case, we couldn't do that. So they said, okay, if you, if there was a question, you would normally ask the business, and you make a decision, and then you write that down as your assumption. So I quite enjoyed this coursework. Uh, I thought it was quite straightforward, because um, as, as soon as you written your assumptions, a picture of your ER diagram, and then you had to list you creating the tables that reflected your ER diagram. Honestly, it was pretty, pretty straightforward piece of coursework. I spent days on the ER diagram, but I didn't really need to. I, I just wanted to review it a few times and it went really well, honestly. So um, yeah, I liked that piece of coursework. So the second coursework was a bit harder, which was a bit misleading considering, considering both pieces of coursework were worth the same amount of marks. But the second coursework was technically harder. So they gave us, again, they gave us a problem statement which detailed sort of what was going on which in this case was a series of train, not train, bus operators. It had information such and lots of different tables. So they gave us a problem statement that explained kind of how all the different operators could be linked, explained things like the fact that different bus stations might be close to uh, amenities, for example, like one bus station might be close to a toilet or to a cash point. And that was kind of detailed in the problem statement. And they also gave us an ER diagram and said that we should assume that this will not change. Um, Off the back of that, we had to create the tables. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't get any marks for that because we got marks on the first piece of coursework. It would have been fun to get the marks for that because we knew what we were doing, but we didn't. So then after we'd created the tables, we then had to had a series of questions that we had to go through and answer using SQL queries. So it was anything from very basic SQL statements to like intercept, the more complicated SQL statements that use like intercept and accept and all those kind of more complicated queries. So I'll go through an example of a few of the questions they asked us. Like what is the location of the bus stop with the highest ID? So that's like fairly simple, which is worth two marks. And the most complicated question, for example, was a bus driver working for Bond Brothers, which is an operator, to needs to withdraw some cash during their break. At which bus stop served by Bond Brothers could they do this easily? You should give the answer as briefly as possible, but ensure that your answer includes both the ID and the description of the relevant bus stops. So it's just like, it's, it's like uh, what you'd get if you were in the real world. It's kind of like a business coming to you with a question that you need to actually figure out, okay, how do I translate that into a SQL statement and how do I get the answer? And then to submit that, we uh, had to write the query and we had to write the answer. So we, so if we had managed to get to the answer some sneaky way, they would know that we didn't know what we were doing and probably take the marks off. So that was the first two modules that we did. Hello, it's Editing Top here. I've just gone through all the data that I filmed for this video and I've realized I have so much information but if I was to put it in one video, it'd be 45 minutes long and I don't think that's the right thing to do. So I've decided to split this video into three parts. So this is part one, obviously about the first two pieces of coursework, then the next two pieces of coursework, then the next two pieces of coursework, obviously. So um, let me know if you actually do want part two and part three. I don't want to put out content that people aren't interested in. But other than that, I really hope you found this video helpful and enjoyed it. And have a lovely day.